Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting video by STEM Coding. I'm Jamor. I'm Daniela. And today we're going to be focusing on exoplanets and binary pulsars. This is one of the follow-up projects to a previous project you've probably looked at by now, which is called a Slingshot with Gravity. So exoplanets stand for extrasolar planets, and these are the types of planets you read about a lot in popular science now, where astronomers will go look at other star systems far out in the universe, and they will search for life on these planets if they can see the planets. However, a lot of times they cannot directly see the planets because the planets are so small, they're so far away, and in today's video we're going to go over a couple of the methods that scientists will use to actually get a sense of where the planets are and what size they are. And we're going to work through that right now. So we're going to start by letting the sun drift through space. So we're going to open up our code from before and slightly modify it form just right here. Okay, and just to give you a sense of what's going on here, we'll run it. And you see now we just have a simple planet orbiting some star. You can think of it as the Earth and the Sun, or if we're doing extrasolar planets, we're probably thinking about some other star system and whatever planets might be around it. So that's how the code begins. And we'll stop it for now. And scroll down a little. So we're going to allow the sun to start by drifting. And to do that, we're going to give the sun an initial velocity in both the x and the y directions. Um, we're going to start by going to the code here that we just opened. OK. And in the very beginning, we want to add two new variables called vx underscore massive and vy underscore massive. These, okay. yes, these, <coughs> Are. We can copy to the clipboard, and notice right now they have a value of 10. So I will put it for simplicity just under where Vx and Vy are. Note in the code here that Vx and Vy represent the planet, whereas Vx massive and Vy massive are going to represent the star. So just under here, I will control V. Oops, have to copy first copy to the clipboard, and then we'll paste it here. All right. Don't forget your semicolons at the end. Fortunately, they already include it. And now we want to update the location of the star. So just as before, when we have the planet constantly moving, um, we update its position based on its velocity. Remember, the new position is going to be equal to the old position plus the velocity times some change in time. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So that's right there. So right here, we can copy this code to the clipboard, come back here. And if we want to update the positions, a good place to put that here is in draw. Oh. Nope, not in draw. I'm going to go here under draw. I'm going to update locations. I like to tab in just to keep everything in a line and easier to read, but it's not critical that you actually do this for the code. Okay. And then in the last step here, we want to modify the code so that we can actually see this um, velocity arrow on the sun. So if you look at in the very bottom of the code, there's a draw sun function which is way down here. See, and we have x massive and y massive. There are some zeros here. The first two zeros represent the velocity. So we want to go in and change that. So just as the code tells us from before, we have vx massive and vy massive we want to put in here. So I'm going to replace this zero by vx massive and this one by Vy. Massive. Okay. And if we just do those few steps and we run our code, we get something that looks like this. Where now the sun is moving into the upper right hand side of the screen. Note that I'll restart this once. Um, 
Note that now you can see these red velocity arrows on both the planet and the sun, and this force arrow is only connected to the planet itself. So we have the force vectors on the planet, but we also want to know what this force looks like for the sun. So what we can do is uh, here in step two, uh, we can put these force vectors on the sun. So what we're going to do is copy um, or put fx and fy into draw sun. Now recall that this, these f, these forces are negative because we know, thanks to Newton's third law, um, that every force has an equal and opposite force. So this, the force on the planet um, is fx in the x direction and fy in the y direction. So on the sun, it's going to be negative fx and negative fy. So what I'm going to do is in the last two zeros of here and draw sun, um, going to put negative fx and negative fy. And let's see what happens to the code now. So now what you can see is the force vectors on this planet and also on the sun. And if I restart it so you can see it better, um, you can see that both arrows, force vectors, the blue ones, um, are going in equal but opposite direction. Now we can go ahead and start changing the velocity of the sun itself. So over here in step three is where we do that. So to begin, we have in the code already some variables at the very beginning called delta vx and delta vy, which you can see here. Um, remember, those variables apply to the planet. And if we want to make them act on the sun, or whichever star we're looking at, we need something equivalent, a delta vx massive and a delta vy massive. So to do that, I'm going to just do something very simple here. I'm going to copy this delta vx, delta vy, to save myself a little typing. I will paste it, and then I'm just going to make sure we rename it Massive. Okay. We need to now update these velocities. Um, how do we want to update the velocities? Well, remember, a velocity is a change of position with respect to time. And if you need to change your velocity, um, what what causes a change in velocity is some type of acceleration. Now an acceleration has a force connected with it. And the force we want to use here, if we're going to update the velocity of the star, is the force that the star feels because of the planet. Right? So if we want to do that, we go to the update velocity section, where we have Vx massive and Vy massive. We're going to put equivalent code here, similar to what we had before, where, again, I'll make my life a little easier by just copying and pasting. And then always make sure that we update the names. So that now updates our velocities based on the change in the velocities. And we're going to calculate what delta Vx massive and delta Vy massive are. And remember I said that what causes a change in velocity is an acceleration. And if we want to get that acceleration, we need to look at the force on the object, which is the force that the planet exerts on our star. By Newton's third law, we know that should be equal and opposite to the force that the star exerts on the planet, which is already given by fx and fy. So we'll go to the code here, right near the bottom where we start defining fx and fy. And then under x, I'm going to make the definition for delta v um, x massive. And under fy, I'm going to make the definition for delta v y massive. So we're going to take 
delta vx massive equals. Now what goes here? Now before we had fx and now we need negative fx because we need the equal and opposite force. So don't forget your minus sign here. fx and this mass which you can see in the beginning of the code if you want to take a look at it is actually the mass of our planet. But now if we're looking at the acceleration on the Sun we need the mass of the Sun here instead of the mass of the planet. So before where we had mass written down we're just going to write a capital M and delta T is the same as before. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here in the y direction. Okay. Now we can play this and notice that we have the planet tugging on the sun as it moves upward. I'll restart it so I can see it more clearly. See, the sun wants to go in the upper right. The planet passes by and it kind of pulls it up. 